This first song is called No Speaker Name. You can sing along with us, stand if you feel the need to.
sacred palsy, which was born of war. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto them, the sick of the palsy, Thy son, thy sins, be forgiven thee. Drop it down to verse 9. Jesus says, Whether it is easier to say to the sick of palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, go thy way into thine house. Let's pray, shall we? Jesus, we're so thankful today for your blessings, your miracles, your hands that are upon us, Lord, that you directed our lives, our, our feet, Lord, where we go. Lord, we pray your hand be upon us here today so we can learn from your word and you can touch our hearts here today, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing, the opportunity and the privilege be able to hear your word today. In the wonderful name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Great to have everyone here today. Amen. I would say today that in the midst of all of this, Jesus is telling us here that let there be joy in the house. Amen. There needs to be a little joy in the house. Right. Amen. When Jesus was there, he came down the streets of Capernaum. Evidently, he had been there before. Maybe it wasn't so exciting the first time that he was there. Maybe there wasn't a crowd. Maybe he hadn't began preaching his ministry yet. But at this time when he came, the Bible says that he came there again to Capernaum. And the Bible says that it was noise in the house. Noise that it was in the house. Now, one reference said that, that the noise there was referring to that, that it was that Jesus was in town. Well, I like what the Bible says. There was noise in the house. Amen. Not that he was just in town, but he was in the house. Amen. He was in the house. He was in the home. Amen. He was in the house there of worship. Amen. He was preaching the word of God. Amen. This, this place became a house of worship. Amen. Our home can be a place of worship. I mean, not just the church when we come here and gather together, but our homes can become a place of worship. Amen. Translated to the Greek. Amen. Our home is literally translated as little sanctuary. Amen. So we can have church in our home. We can have we can have noise. Amen. In our house at home. We can pray. Amen. We can seek God. We can have revival in our homes, in our families. We can have Jesus in the house. Hallelujah. We can have worship in our own homes. We come here today to worship. Lord, amen. There needs to be a certain sound of praise here in the house of God for the miracles that He has done. We're here to do what we need to do, and that is to proclaim who Jesus is. And when we don't proclaim, and then we don't proclaim like, hey, you know what? Something's going on. We don't whisper a proclamation. We proclaim something with a voice. We proclaim it with a shout. We proclaim it making noise that something's taking place. Have you ever heard of a quiet riot? A riot is a breakout. There's, there's noise. There's something going on. Amen. Another way to, to, uh, to say it is it was rumored that Jesus was in the house. Amen. Everybody said good gossip. Good gossip. Amen. That was good gossip. They were talking about that Jesus was in the house. Amen. Something good was going to happen. Something good was going to take place. It was some good, good gossip. Amen. And another reference said that it'd be like a mob that Jesus was there. There was, there was noise abroad. It was like a mob came into the house. Like a mob came into town. It was noise abroad that Jesus was there. Amen. I present to you today that it was like a celebration. Jesus came into our home. He came into my house. I know what it'd be. It'd be a celebration. We'd be running the house and dancing and shouting. And you would be too. Because while he's there, he's going to do something. Jesus doesn't show up to do nothing. Jesus always shows up to do his perfect work. Whether it's a healing in your life, whether it's a miracle that you need, he's not going to show up and he's going to leave and you're going to say, well, that was nice that Jesus is going to stop by and see me. That was kind of nice. He doesn't do that. When Jesus comes to your house, it's going to be noise. In other words, your neighbors are going to know you're going to have revival. Your neighbors are going to hear about your healing. Your people out your job are going to find out what's going on in Brownsburg. They're going to find out. We're going to spread the word. We're going to 
you know, and they couldn't get in. The doors were all covered. People were standing around. There was like a multitude around about this house. So they couldn't get in. But these guys had faith that if they could get this friend of theirs that had the palsy, he was crippled, couldn't walk, if they could get him to Jesus, their faith, not necessarily the guy laying in the bed. I think he agreed with them after a while when they started trying to lug him up on the roof. My question is, I don't know how they got him up on the roof. Now, it talks about what they did when they're on the roof. You know, maybe they ripped back the tiles and the grass or some of the mud that might be there on the top of the hut. You know, that was the easy part. But dragging this guy up the walls of this place to get him up on the roof, I'm going to tell you right now, that took some effort. The tearing the roof off was easy. So there was some preparation taking place here. Sometimes when you start walking with God, you're awake. You don't walk in the door and say, well, I'm just full of faith today. Man, I just got it. Woo! No, you go through some struggles. You go through some trials. And God builds up your faith. So as they were, as they were struggling to get this guy up this wall, I'm sure they were, you know, sliding this. It was like a little, like a cop trying to slide him up the rope. Maybe he fell out once. I don't know. Then maybe they tilted it. Maybe they almost dropped him two or three times. But here you got these poor guys, you know, trying to struggle to get this guy up on this rooftop. Well, finally they get him up on the rooftop. They're like, oh, man. Now we got that done. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's a struggle to come into the house of God. Did you know that? You know, it's a struggle to be here sometimes. Sometimes you sleep in. Sometimes you don't have time. Sometimes things happen. Sometimes you go out to your car and you get ready to come to church and you turn the key and it does nothing. And you're thinking already, oh, Jesus. This is going to be a bad day. Well, what you need to do is just pray over that thing and get started again. Amen. You might be all right. I've done that before. <laughs> but coming to church is not always easy. I proclaim to you today that it was not easy for these four guys to do what they did. Their faith did not waver. They were determined. Sometimes you have to have a determination to just get to the house of God. If I could just get there. If I could just hear a song. If I could just hear a pastor preach one more time. If I could just hear the word of God. If I could just reach out and touch him like the lady said. If I could just grab the hem of that garment, everything is going to be okay. If I could just grab that hem. So sometimes it's work. It's work. We got to work. We got to take the faith. Faith in action. We got to do something. Calvary down, Calvary 
is up. Living, living for God is up. Everything we do is up. You understand what I'm talking about? So we automatically, due to gravity, nature tells us that we have a fight on our hands. It's always going to be an uphill battle. But the key to that is we win the battle. That's right. That's right. So it may cost us something. We may have to do something to somebody. It might be a struggle. We might even have to give up a Tuesday night to teach somebody a Bible study. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I gotta give up a whole night to teach somebody a Bible study. I can't believe it. You're taking the roof off. You're struggling to get up on the roof. Take some towel off. What are you doing? You're working. You're working at it. It's not always easy bringing someone to church. I've brought a lot of people to church, trust me. I've done all kinds of things. I've traveled for miles and miles and miles and other cities and done different things and spent my money, my gas, my time picking people up. The stories go on and on and on. But they came. God blessed. Some of them got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Some of them got baptized really quickly. One guy almost got baptized in the back of my truck, I'm telling you. Some people are hungry and they want God. And they have, we may have to go through a little bit of sacrifice and a little bit of effort to get them here. Can someone say amen? amen. Hallelujah. But if we could just get them here, if we could get them in the walls of this building, where the Spirit of God can touch them, where God can begin to do a work. Because we know, we know when God descends and He blesses here in the church and miracles begin to happen, we know that there's noise in the house. We know that Jesus is in the house. And we've had Him here in the house. I've got several miracles written down here on this. Brother Jelson is still coming to church. I don't know how he's doing it. He's had multiple different cancers. They've all been benign. He still keeps coming. I told him once that he's been cut off so many times. So I told him, I said, you don't even need to die. They've cut so much off of you. You don't even gain any weight anymore. I mean, that's, I'm making light of it. But I'm just telling you how many different cancers that man had. And he's still here. This is one of the guys that's taking up the offering. He's been healed of cancer multiple, multiple times. Yeah. Sister Johnson's here. I'm just going to name off a few of them. Sister Johnson, she's got cancer. She whipped that thing with it. We would have to see her. My wife thought we would have to see her. We, you know, we just thought we'd be you know, comforting to her and you know, be all sad and we'd talk to her, you know, and we just well that woman was on fire. We went there and she was running all over the house and wanted to fix something to eat. Talked about her flowers and went outside on the porch and went out on the back patio and took us out and showed us the garage. And, but I'm looking at my wife and thinking, does she have cancer or with the wrong house? I mean, she was just building her holes. I mean, she was just building really good. And now she's had a heart attack. She's had a heart attack, and now she's doing really good again. I mean, they went in there, did the surgery, the bypass that she needed. She's up and running again. She calls me up and says, hey, Master Oval, how are you doing? And I'm like, well, I, I, you might be doing better than I am. I'm not sure. But uh, she just keeps going and going and going. She's like that, uh, that little bunny. Well, they call that bunny. Yeah, she's like an energizer bunny. Amen. She just keeps going and going and going. Amen. Brother Ruben's not here this morning. Amen. But Ruben walked away from the death store. The doctor, two different doctors looked at him and said, Why are you even here? We don't know why you're here, but you're here. So when you see Brother Ruben, I want you to know today that it's a privilege that we can still shake his hand, hug his neck, and slap him on the back and say, Hey, bro, what's going on? I love that guy. He's a miracle. Amen. When Jesus is in the house, Things happen. Amen. Sister Connie's here today. Hallelujah. She's been through multiple battles since we've been here. Amen. But she's still here. She's still singing. She's still praying. She's still doing a red program. She's still teaching us all how to read our Bible. Thank God she's doing what she's doing. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Sister Janice has got something going on right now, so we need to join in and pray for her. Amen. She had the bombs to come back. We're going to pray. But they said it's not that bad. Amen. She's just going to have some radiation. That's it. We need to pray. It stays that way that God blesses and they may even heal it before she's even dealt with all the radiation. Can someone say amen? amen. We don't know what God's going to do. Amen. But well, we have different people come through here all the time. I'm telling you, as long as we keep praying, we keep coming to the house of God, we keep being faithful, we keep sacrificing, 
trying to bring people to come, tearing off the roof, getting the, getting the people that are sick and ill, people that are, that are troubled in their life. If we could just get them to the doors, it might be a sacrifice. It might be an effort. But we can get them in the door. There's going to be noise in the house. There's going to be noise in the house. And it's going to spread. The rumor's going to spread. Hey, you know what? Brownsburg's having a revival. Brownsburg's got something going on. There's something happening in that church over there. They used to run 6 and 10 and 12, and sometimes now they run 35 and 40. I'm telling you, something's happening. Yes. we got people coming to our parking lot talking to us. We don't even know who they are. We've got backsliders out here on the back parking lot. Come back here and look at the grandpas, or I think it's the grandpa. One that come, they come to see Brother Jones's church. What's he doing? He's sitting down here on the back of the parking lot, wondering what it still looks like in the church. He didn't come in, but we were able to talk to him. And he opened right up, Sister Leah. We didn't know who he was. Told us who his name was. Hi, was related to Brother Jones and Sister Crystal and the whole family. And this went on and on. He was proud just to be in the parking lot. It was amazing. We've got different neighbors talking to us all the time. I'm telling you, I'm, this city is finding out that there's some noise going. I got some things going on here that God is blessing. Amen. So if you just jump on the bandwagon with us, amen, bring some people, love on some people, reach out to some people, sacrifice a little bit, God's going to do something and He's going to restore and rebuild this church. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know how many, I've calculated some, I've went through the, about five different attendance books that you guys have there at this church. If all the backsliders would come back to this church right now, this is true everywhere we go. Everywhere, everywhere you go. If all, the, if all of them would come back, this church would probably run 350 people. That's cool, you know what? We're not ready for that. We could have two services. We could have one here. Brother Ogle could have another one out in the family life center. And we could have double services going on. Easy peasy, spread out the tables, have a massive Bible study going out there with new converts and backsliders coming back to the Lord, loving on them, sweating together, crying together. Up here we'd be preaching where my mind had some evangelists come. I'm telling you what, we'd be knocking out these walls. You don't know what God can do. We just don't know what, what can happen. That's right. When you have noise in the house. When you have, not gossip, rumor, good rumor, good gossip, that Jesus is coming to practice. Hallelujah. Let's, let's stay in the day. I'm just telling you, there's some things going on. We'll all work together. We'll sacrifice together. God is about to do what we haven't seen here in a long, long time. Just look around right now. We've got about ten families, or about six families that are missing right here. And I don't even count how many people's here. There's probably 38 or so. And we're missing 10 or 15. You're, just look around. You're witnessing a miracle right now. I'm not for sure how many people we were voted in with. It was like 10 or 12, something like that. I'm telling you, it's God's doing the work. And he's honoring you. What's being done? I don't know. Let's sing a song, shall we? I feel like rejoicing. Oh, Jesus. I just want to thank. Oh, Jesus. Are you thankful today?